this talk will be about RabbitMQ, and we have a speaker here uh, from Telesign, yep. and this is basically what they do. You use RabbitMQ in production to send uh, yep. SMS, so who, who better to tell us about this than the guy from the Telesign? <laughs> Please have a round of applause for him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Velko, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a lead software engineer at, uh, at LSN. Um, I'm of the team responsible for messaging products um, in LSN. So, uh, my topic of my talk today is about uh, RabbitMQ and how we use it in our systems. And we actually use it a lot, and uh, in one way or another, it helps us to build uh, highly, highly available, scalable, and performance systems, and and pretty much in in uh, in a very flexible way. So, what are we going to uh, cover today? Um, first, I'm going to see uh, some uh, basics about the MQP protocol, on which the the RabbitMQ is uh, is based upon. Then we're going to see some specifics and features of RabbitMQ really quickly, and um, and going to cover some uh, use cases um, that that we uh, utilize RabbitMQ in, in our system. So uh, to mention to mention then quickly uh, how we uh, how we um, in, enabled uh, the this number discovery platform to uh, to make requests. In synchronous and asynchronous way, whether it's uh, requesting through the the a, uh, to the REST API or the or the MQP directly, then um, you'll see how we de deprecated um, how we deprecated SMPP uh, connections, uh, our internal SMPP connections, in um, in our SMS platform in favor of RabbitMQ Federation. Uh, then we'll see how we also use the RabbitMQ Federation to uh, to federate replies and reports uh, on our newest product, the RCS, and, and finally something that we currently work on um, as a complete a completion rate uh, uh, streaming into uh, into AWS Kinesis. So let's start. Um, MQP is um, is advanced message queuing protocol. So it is a protocol that en enables conforming um, messaging clients to communicate with the uh, uh, conforming uh, messaging middleware brokers. <coughs> um, so, being a protocol, and uh, it's being uh, this is a binary uh, application layer uh, protocol. It's built on on top of TCP, and um, and being a binary, it features really uh, high speed of transmission. Um, this um, it it is based on uh, what we are talking here today is is. Uh, is uh, related to MQP 091. Don't be fooled by the, the zero at the beginning. It's really uh, mature, it's really uh, old. Uh, there's also the RabbitMQ and uh, the majority of uh, the messaging brokers are, are, um, um, are supporting this uh, widely. Um, and um, and although, although there is 1.0 version, it's not really uh, that, uh, that used, uh, that much used, and uh, is uh, um, and it's pretty much different of the of the 091 we're talking here. In, in MQP, there are three main parties. Uh, we have we have brokers, we have publishers, and consumers. Brokers are are uh, um, entities or uh, brokers uh, receive messages from publishers and routes them to uh, to consumers. Uh, it's pretty a pretty simple flow. Uh, it uh, the the publishers are are the messages that publish the messages. They're producing them. They're also called the producers, and consumers are of course the, the messages uh, the the applica applications that that consume that, that process those messages. And uh, and if you look at the uh, at the broker, it has uh, some main entities like. Uh, like queues, exchanges, uh, exchanges, and bindings, and all of them together, uh, they uh, they form, they they di dictate how the message will be uh, will be routed. And here, 
we see the, the basic concept of the, of the AMQP and the Rabbit MQ as well. Uh, so um, the publisher, uh, publisher uh, is sending uh, messages are pu uh, published to exchanges, which are often compared to post, uh, post offices. Um, and those exchanges then route uh, the uh, messages to queues using the rules called uh, bindings. Um, and finally, a broker is um, a broker is delivering those messages to queues that are sub subscribed to those uh, delivering the, to consumers that are subscribed to the, uh, subscribed to those queues, or uh, or the uh, the consumers are are fetching them on demand, if this is the the, the way uh, uh, you, you want it to, to work. Now, um, AMQP um, exchanges. What are those? Uh, like I mentioned, we. Uh, where we where we send messages, and that's always the case. And uh, uh, even though it seems as as we are sending a message to a queue, it's always routed to uh, through an exchange. Their uh, responsibility is to route the message to uh, to zero or or more queues. Um, being a zero, sometimes it, it, uh, it this this happens. Maybe we misconfigured something, and those those messages are going. Uh, going to the the black box, never going to see them again. So we have to take care about uh, the bindings. Um, and bindings are, uh, along with the exchange type, are the defining type of the of the of the routing algorithm. Um, so I mentioned the exchange types. There are, uh, there are three uh, main exchange types. Although uh, the bro message brokers can implement their own. So those are direct, topic, and fan out. Um, here we can see a little bit um, um, overview of uh, what the, uh, how the how the um, exchanges work. Direct is pretty simple. You have to match the routing key with the with, with the binding key uh, on which the queue is uh, l listening. Uh, so uh, only in in the case when the, the routing key is matching binding key, it will be routed to that queue. Then you have. And then we have the, the, the topic exchange, which is uh, pretty versatile and, and uh, flexible, and it's used in, 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 in most of the uh, use cases that I've uh, seen so far. Um, and it's based on the, the pattern key matching. Uh, we can selectively choose which messages will go to which consumers um, or which queues then consumers. Um, and um, for this purpose, the, 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 um, the key, uh, the, the star and hash signs uh, are, are used uh, interchangeably uh, to, uh, to, let's say, match multiple, uh, multiple key, uh, key names at once. Um, queues, of course, uh, it's all about queuing here. Uh, they store messages. Uh, we enqueue them uh, in queue and dequeue in FIFO manner. Although in some cases with Revit MQ that can that can change with prior priority queues. Um, they their behavior is descri described by the, the the several properties like, uh, uh, for instance, durability uh, that uh, that will tell the, the the that that will instruct the broker to uh, to save the message to uh, to a disk so uh, in this case it will um, the the message will will survive if the broker uh, restarts eventually um, then and let's see what what's what's so special about RabbitMQ. it is uh, open source message broker it is uh, it is considered as most popular um, i Honestly, never used anything any, anything else. It is most popular for me. So, um, it implements uh, in its core the the AMQP 091 uh, protocol, and it's built on top of that. Although it supports other protocols like MQTT, Stomp, and uh, also MQP uh, version 10. Um, this. Uh, and, and this is supported by uh, by a plugin architecture. Um, RabbitMQ is is, um, is is built using um, uh, is is developed in uh, in Erlang, 
um, uh, in Erlang programming language and is built on top of the Open Telecom platform framework, which gives us, reliable, uh, which gives us uh, clustering and, and, and failover. Um, so with all that, um, um, all that figures, it is really reliable whenever we want it to be uh, either when con consuming or publishing messages. Um, it has a lot of uh, um, uh, interesting features like, uh, in, in, by, by um, to route messages between exchanges. You have a, a concept like uh, uh, alternate exchange, um, etc. You can cluster them uh, to make one, one uh, big logical um, cluster. Um, also, uh, it, there, there's, there are many client libraries available out there, uh, either maintained by, by, by the core team uh, or third party. Um, like I mentioned, there's uh, all of those uh, clustering and uh, federating and then policies, all the extensions to the original IMQP. Um, and, um, and of course, it, it supports, uh, it is extensible through, uh, through plugins. And, uh, and there, there's a lot of plugins that are already, that are part of the core installation. Uh, and it's being distributed with, uh, with, uh, uh, with RabbitMQ server um, a binary. In, uh, um, so you just need to enable them. So for instance, management plugin is, is pretty useful and gives you the, the all kinds of, uh, it gives you uh, three ways of, of managing the, your, your uh, RabbitMQ installation, uh, like uh, management UI, the, um, the REST API, and of course the, the, the command line interface. Um, this, I'm gonna uh, talk about more about uh, uh, federation, but in general, it, it allows us to, uh, it's a plugin that allows uh, us to connect, connect remote, um, a remote uh, RabbitMQ, uh, RabbitMQ clusters. So they're in, in, and physically in, in a different administrative uh, uh, domain or something, so remote data centers or something like that. So let's see uh, the, the, the use cases we have uh, here. First is um, is the um, the NDP. NDP stands for Number Discovery Platform. That's uh, that's a um, a product. Uh, that, that, that's an internal set of tools that we have that we developed in in, uh, uh, in Telesign, and it allows it um, it gives you um, specific um, information about uh, phone numbers. Uh, so th this information varies from uh, whether this uh, this phone number is located on the telecom or Telenor network, uh, which is really important for uh, for SMS, and that's why uh, the SMS platform uses it. Or there's some, there are some call forwarding detection uh, mechanism, for instance, interesting for for the voice system. So. In, in general, uh, the idea it was it was uh, initially designed to be uh, to be uh, the HTTP um, yeah, to have only HTTP interface, and uh, so and uh, so so we had the REST API and the backend, uh, the NDP backend worker. NDP worker is communicating with the, with the, with a lot of uh, uh, providers that uh, we obtain this information from. Um, and we accept the request from the internal services, the internal products on on this uh, uh, on the REST API. So it's pretty much a, a, a microservice, a microservice in, um, essentially. Um, so the way it works, the the the, the, the request uh, that comes to the HTTP uh, first, the REST REST API will declare. Um, a queue, the uh, dynamic reply to queue, the, the one on the top you see there. So this is this is the queue that is um, that is uh, provisioned for uh, that is being declared by the REST API for the each Apache uh, Apache worker, and we call that a temporary queue. So uh, as long as this Apache worker lives, uh, the, the, uh, this queue will also uh, will also live. Then uh, the 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 request we receive we publish on the on the topic we have here, it will be routed to the, uh, in this case, to allow priority queues, 
I'm going to get to that later, and will be uh, picked by uh, the backend worker. Um, but previously, the REST API uh, published the, uh, the, the, um, the argument, uh, the property, uh, describing what is the reply to queue that we want to see the, the, the response, uh, where we want to see the response back. Uh, this, uh, the, the backend knows about this, and it will use this information to publish the message back. The REST API, of course, listens to this or this specific Apache worker, and, 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 and passes the response back to the, the original requester. Now, um, SMS, or to be specific, SMS Verify in this case, is, uh, is, uh, is actually the product that, uh, this, the, the oldest product we, we have um, in Telesan is, uh, uh, it, it gives us the two-factor authentication to our customers. So uh, whenever the user want to log in, uh, the, the, the customers are sending uh, send requests to them, okay, here's the phone number, authenticate them, we generate the code, we send the, we send the SMS, uh, and then when the SMS arrives to the end user, they'll uh, type in the code, and the, and the customer will ask uh, us for, the, uh, for this, uh, uh, if the code is correct. So this is the, the, the classic two-factor uh, two authentication, how, how it works in, in, in Telesen. So these messages are important and really, um, <coughs> and, uh, and really have a high priority. Uh, so the request coming to the, the NDP um, uh, service uh, is, uh, they're coming from uh, various sides. And uh, the idea was that we uh, somehow uh, separate, uh, separated those. So that's why there were two queues and the, and the routing key that was used uh, to, to publish the message corresponds to the, to the high priority key in the, in the SMS example. And uh, it's, pretty much, uh, it's pretty much the same as for uh, the REST API approach, uh, only difference is that the SMS requires the, the asynchronous way of, uh, of uh, exchanging, uh, exchanging um, uh, messages. So there is no waiting, there is no, there is no locking mechanisms who just, just push something in a queue, and then another thread is waiting somewhere to to uh, to start uh, uh, to to continue sending the uh, the request. Now, um, another another approach uh, in in NDP was uh, it has its own rules and own set of rules that are that are managed by the some back office um, uh, web UI application. Um, so. This, these rules are, um, uh, they, uh, the, the backend workers are loading them into memory. And, uh, and, and, this is, uh, and they're changing it uh, occasionally, the, let's say in five to ten minutes. But uh, there was a need to, to change this immediately after, as soon as the, the message has been, uh, the, the, the change has been applied. So the idea was to use the, 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 the back office web UI um, uh, we'll, we'll hit the uh, API with, uh, uh, with a signal, say, okay, reload rules, um, and the API will just uh, send a signal to the fanout exchange, like I mentioned, it will broadcast, uh, it will copy the message to all of the queues that are, uh, that are bound to it, and, uh, and uh, each of these queues actually correspond to, uh, to some of the, to, uh, to um, one uh, instance of the of the backend worker, so we can have thousands of them, and we'll have uh, the rules reloaded on each of them in uh, instantly. So that's with uh, that's it with uh, with the number discovery platform. Next is the um, how we deprecated internal SMPP links and in in the SMS platform. Um, at the beginning, so this is just a short story. Uh, Telesign had its uh, the, the SMS verified product, and they had to communicate to send these messages to to various uh, numbers of uh, providers, uh, SMS providers, including this company called Routo Telecom, um, and which also had its own uh, set of uh, uh, providers. This is uh, so they had, the Routo Telecom had really uh, really smart routing mechanism at the time, and Telesign saw this and, um, and, uh, and uh, showed interest in, in buying the company. So they acquired Route to Telecom, 
so we combined these two systems. But uh, for a long time, they, they, they looked like uh, pretty independent systems, especially because we had those SMPP links. Um, I haven't mentioned the SMPP stands for short message peer-to-peer -peer protocol, which is the which is the standard, uh, which is protocol used by the telecommunication industry to, to exchange SMS uh, messages. Now, it, so it's a standardized protocol. Um, we have it on our uh, outbound side. We have it also internally. So we realized after some time that it's uh, really not, um, it's, it's, um, it, it's an overkill. We, we don't need it, especially after, after some time we have improved and worked on this. Uh, on this, um, on on both sides of the systems, we implemented some features, uh, extensions, and and uh, improvements. Uh, and of course, we on both sides implemented RabbitMQ um, as a queuing me mechanism between uh, some. And in this case, the blue boxes are the SMPP clients, and before them there's a queue, and on the right side there's the red boxes are the SMPP server, uh, and also they have the, 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 the queues on the, on, on, on where they are publishing messages. Uh, and we realized that the messages are pretty, uh, the message content on the left and the right side is, is almost identical, um, and uh, so we wanted to deprecate all of this SMPP layer uh, to make it more, uh, to make it faster, make it easier to maintain uh, in the future. And this is where the RabbitMQ uh, fe uh, Federation comes in. Uh, so we basically uh, connected uh, the upstream links. Um, uh, we federated uh, upstream data centers, that being the ones on the left side, uh, to the downstream. So we, on each of the on the on the right data centers, we uh, defined uh, we defined an uh, upstream link which corresponds to the to the ones on the left, and uh, and we wrapped them in a, in a federation upstream set, and applied this to a policy which was uh, which was uh, policy uh, applied to the queue. This is a, the policy is uh, something that is specific to RabbitMQ. And, uh, and at this point, the, the federation links were up and, uh, and flowing uh, seamlessly to, to the other side. And, and this uh, allows us to, to, to completely uh, remove the, the obsolete uh, or, or, the, or the, the overhead SMPP layer in, 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 um, in the whole SMS platform. Now, um, this was really, uh, really extensive work and it took us a lot of time uh, and, and we had to keep keep an eye on the on the existing on the existing traffic. Uh, there shouldn't be the, the, there wasn't supposed to be any uh, any any downtimes. So it has to have a rollback mechanism and uh, migrate and rollback mechanism. Uh, so we can we can go back to the way it was before in in matter of uh, in matter of seconds. And that's where the management management plugin. Uh, helped us, and it's uh, the, the the API commands. Now the the next is um, is is the RCS uh, RCS program. The, uh, RCS is actually rich communication services, and it's a communication protocol uh, between mobile carriers and and the carrier and uh, and um, and the phone numbers. Uh, so, uh, and it, it allows the carriers to, to, to the distribute um, um, rich content messages, such as we see in the, in the, in the modern uh, chat applications uh, we, we use all today, like WhatsApp and Viber, etc. So, um, but the thing is, this RCS was, uh, was formed uh, a long time ago, and, uh, um, but it's really going slowly. And uh, Google decided to, to take matter into into their their hands and uh, and to um, and to start pushing this more more seriously. So they uh, so they created a, um, a suit of APIs that will uh, that allow companies at least to to send business uh, business messages through the uh, through the uh, described as RCS. And um, and this um, 
the, the, the rich content here uh, provided by, uh, by by Google is is uh, is delivered delivered directly to the to the messages app that we all uh, all all have on the on our Android phones. So how it works? Um, we have uh, on our system we have some RCS API. Uh, we uh, receive messages from uh, from our clients. Uh, we push it uh, push them to the to RabbitMQ. Uh, then the then the the that this message RCS sender picks up, everything is decoupled, uh, it communicates with Google, it knows where to send. Um, and that this is not it, that this is just part of the flow. Each of these messages have reports, uh, the read report, the delivery report, uh, typing indicators, like someone is typing on the other side. Um, so, uh, so, but these messages are, are uh, routed to a uh, different way. And that is backed by uh, Google's gRPC uh, protocol. So we had to um, create this uh, RCS receiver uh, um, service that subscribes to, to our topics that we have there, each of our customers, and it will listen for all the messages that got, uh, that got back. Now, um, it's the same as on the way, uh, on the way in, uh, also on the way back. Uh, the report is uh, is uh, processed, pushed into queue, and then uh, taken by a notifier, who then uh, publishes uh, a status update on the on the um, on the customer's uh, callback server. Now, we have to there is a, uh, we we have to uh, keep track of the of those transactions. We have to store these transactions somewhere, and we do do this in the in the database. Um, in the transaction database, they're called CDR, and uh, which means a call data record. Uh, this is um, um, its 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 whole purpose is to uh, to uh, to to uh, make easier tracking and um, and um, tracking analytics and billing uh, later on. But the databases are are local to th this database is uh, is local to um, a data center. Uh, since we have several data centers, they are not replicated among each other, and uh, uh, so there is a process called DTL that pushes, that pulls data and and, and stores into the um, into the um, um, centralized data data warehouse. Now, um, if we have the data, uh, one data center, that would be easy. We could just uh, the, the idea how we how we how we did this is uh, that all the messages that go through are are, are uh, published to the topic exchange. That RCS sender will pick up all of them, uh, but the, RC, the CDR writer in the local DC will pick up the only ones that are um, are destined to uh, to this local DC. The idea is that we first write the write the CDR. We insert them, and then when the report comes back, we have to update it. So that that was the that was the challenge, uh, because the, we couldn't guarantee that the report will come to the same DC, and um, and that's where, again, RabbitMQ Federation uh, kicked in. Uh, we uh, had the the each CDR uh, the in each data center we we had three CDR queues one for the local CDR writer and and two for the remote ones and those remote ones were federated to uh, to a data center where they should uh, where they uh, should be uh, where they should be updated and um, and the thing is uh, we had to uh, we managed to do this by Using the reference ID uh, identifier, which is sent back to, from Google uh, to us, and this reference ID we have a hidden uh, hidden data center identifier. So by that we could know which DC was um, uh, where, where did it or originated and how uh, how we can route it back. Now um, we just use the identifier as a routing key, and it was routed to a specific queue, and then, um, in, depending on the, the data center where we are in, it was, it was uh, routed back. Um, and the last use case, 
I have is is uh, the something we're currently working on. It's pretty simple, and it relies on the uh, allows uh, allowed us to to hack into our existing Elastic uh, Elasticsearch the logging infrastructure, uh, which has which has RabbitMQ already in uh, in between, and um, so we wanted to have this completion rate data. Completion event is what I described before, the full circle when the, we send a message, user types in, and the, and the customer checks in on our uh, status API, or the completion API. So this data is really, really important to us for, uh, for reporting purposes, and we, ha we have to have them in real, uh, in real time. Now, uh, if um, uh, this data we already have, but it's there late due to this ETL process, they're late to like five, 15 to 30 minutes. Um, and, and by this, we will, uh, we can, uh, uh, we, we just used a different, uh, we created an, another queue and uh, used the binding keys on this queue, uh, the, the specific ones that, uh, that we need uh, to extract the messages that are already flowing to the Elasticsearch um, infrastructure. So th this, this is a completely untouched, the, the upper layer is completely untouched. We're just extracting additionally, copying uh, the, those messages by specifying which, which keys, because the Logster shipper on the left is, is, um, uh, publishing, uh, is publishing messages by, by its, its index. Um, so, so, and then eventually we just need uh, the, this, uh, this little service that will uh, listen to this queue and filter, uh, do whatever it needs to, and publish to a, a AWS Kinesis for, for further processing and, and, uh, and analytics. That's it. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can ask them now or approach later. Yeah, feel free to ask any questions later on. I'm going to be stick around here. And approach later. Thank you. Thank you.